Greetings, everybody. Brother Dan Goodwin here. We want to wish you a very Merry Christmas from the Prophecy in the Spotlight family, Dr. Hiltabit and myself. I'll be bringing him on in just a moment. Uh, I want to read a verse for you. Uh, we're going to go back about 700 years from the birth of Christ and read for you a prophecy of that birth, uh, the virgin birth. Let's read that in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, somewhere around 700 or so years from the birth of Christ. Isaiah gave this prophecy. He said this, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And uh, that's a beautiful verse. That's a, uh, uh, that's a prophecy about the birth of Christ and Him coming into the world. And uh, we've got Dr. Hiltabill in the studio again. We're going to bring him in in just a minute. We have his uh, CDD, CD set here, three CDs, The Truths of Christmas. And we did a show last week on this. But here it is, if you're watching on television, this is Christmas Day, December 25th, 2020. And we're going to do our part two of his CD set uh, in the show today. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to go all the way to the birth of Christ. We're going to start right there. And we're going to show you about, uh, about the shepherds. We're going to show you about the, some real interesting developments about the innkeeper and, and, and the inn. Remember, no room in the inn. We're going to talk about the, uh, the swaddling clothes. And Brother Hiltabill is going to, going to shed some light on the truth, the real truth of some of these things. Because we've been clouded with some tradition over the years. And uh, we're gonna, uh, like the wise men and things like that. So we're going to we're going to bring Brother Hill to Biddle in, and uh, so so don't go away. All right. Well, Doc, here we are. Uh, Christmas, Christmas Day. Day. Man, I love Christmas. Yes, I do. I do. I know it's commercialized and, uh, <laughs> and, and all that. I know we got yes. Santa and all this yeah. other stuff and Rudolph. And, yes. But I still think Christmas is a, is a big deal. Amen. I realize this is not the real Christmas Day. This no. is not the day of his birth. But I think it's still a time when people's hearts are open. Yes. And I think, I think it's an opportunity for God's people, the church, preachers, yeah. to get some truth out there Amen. and uh, have cantatas, have plays, yes. and bring people in and, and tell not, them the it truth. It might not be the right day, but it's the right reason. Yeah, I like that. Yes. And He's the reason he is. for yes. the season. Yes. And uh, All right, but before we get to that, and, and we're going to, I want to I wanna share with the audience uh, my book, Seven Clocks mm -hmm. a Ticking. There's a chapter in here that is so important, and it's really the Christmas story. And I use Luke chapter 2. But in the Seven Clocks Ticking book, some of you may have this. There's a chapter in here called A Jewel of Great Price. And in this chapter, Doc, I talk about the fact that Christ's coming mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago was a shadow yeah. or a type or a figure of His second right. coming. And uh, this really hit me. This is a tremendous proof of the pre-tribulation rapture. Amen. Because when Jesus came the first time, He came in two stages. Mm -hmm. He came first as a little baby, and basically it was hidden from the world. Mm -hmm. In fact, I believe this, Doc, I believe that John the Baptist was kind of like a decoy. I think Satan was probably following that wild guy around out in the <laughs> wilderness out there thinking, because everybody thought he was the Messiah. Yeah. They were asking him, who are you, John? Are you the Messiah? They asked, are you Elijah? Because Elijah is mm -hmm. the forerunner. Right. They asked, are you, are, you, are you the Messiah? And he says, no, I'm not him. But uh, he kind of kept the attention, kept Satan right. away from Christ so that Christ could come on the scene and do what he had to do. Now, that's just a, a theory. I'm not yeah. saying I can prove it. But, uh, but when he came, it was secret. I don't think Satan was anywhere around that birthing it wasn't, place. It wasn't widely dispersed. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, I mean, who would have expected that he'd been born where he was born? Yes. And we'll get to that in a minute, yes. where he was actually born. Mm -hmm. But you would, uh, you would have expected him to be born in a palace somewhere mm -hmm. or some beautiful place. No, he was born, there was no room for him anywhere. No. 
And, uh, but in the, in the book, I talk about the fact that uh, uh, the first coming of Christ was in two stages. Stage one was quiet and somewhat secret. The second stage was very public. He was born secretly, you know, in, yeah. in the, in the, in the, at the tower of the flock, the flock. there. And uh, the Bible calls it born in a manger. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born there with the cattle and whatever else is in there, the sheep. And, uh, but the second, but when he comes on the scene publicly, Three and a half years later, or, or 33 and a half years Sorry, later, I should half, say, yeah. mm -hmm. when he comes on the scene, because his ministry starts when he's 30, but that they don't know who he is yet. Right. It's when he rides down the hill on the donkey, four days before he's going to die on mm -hmm. the cross. On yep. the 10th of, <laughs> how you pronounce it, Nissan. Uh -huh. I say Nissan, but uh, <laughs> he rides down that hill on that donkey. And uh, that's what we call Palm Sunday. Fulfills Daniel 9. Yeah, and Zechariah 9, I think it is. Yes. He fulfills that. Behold, yes. your king cometh riding on a donkey. Riding on a donkey. Yeah, yeah. and it talks about, mm -hmm. they'll say, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. And that's oh, what happened. Exactly. And uh, I believe that's the, their day of visitation. And uh, I believe that's what he's thinking about when he's on the mountain looking down and he gives that story, oh, how I would have gathered you as a hen right. gathers, yeah. but you would not. I think he's thinking mm -hmm. of the fact that they're going to reject him. And, uh, and that's, that's the choosing of the lamb. He rides that's down right. and presents himself. They set him aside. And four days later, they, they set him up on a pole, yep. up on a, on a cross. And uh, so that's the, 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 the two phases of his first coming, mm -hmm. secretly and then publicly. Well, guess what? Second coming of Christ, 2,000 years yes. later. He's coming secretly. He's going to meet us in Catch the clouds here. at the rapture. Yes. And uh, behold, uh, nobody's going to see that. It's going to happen. It's a thief. It says a thief in the night. In a moment, in twinkling of yep. an eye. And then seven years later, as we count time, he's coming on that white horse, not a donkey, coming on a white horse, a sign of victory. King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah, it's going to end the battle of Gar Armageddon, come to the yep. mountain of olives, yep. split that thing, ride through the Kidron yes. Valley into the Amen. city and uh, set up the kingdom. And uh, what a proof of a pre-tribulation rapture. The two phases of his coming. And I try to tell people that, that argued the pre-trib, I said, look, he came in two phases the first time. He's coming in two phases yes, he is. the second time. Amen. So let's get to, let's get to your, your CD here. Don't, by the way, this is on the website. You can go to the website there and get it. Uh, click on, uh, click on my, me when you get to the website, and you'll find the bookstore, and you can get the seven clocks. So to, that chapter is only four pages. It's worth the whole book, <laughs> really, that chapter. Um, fantastic stuff, though, if I may say so myself. I wrote it, but um, let's get to your uh, to our part two here yes. of your CD because we uh, we didn't get as far as no, we, we won't get all the way either. Yeah, you know me too well. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna we're gonna go straight to the birth of Christ here. Okay. And by the way, this is on the website as well. If you click, if you go to the website, uh, if you go to the website, you'll see Dr. Hiltabittle there. Just click on his page. And you'll get to his bookstore, and you can order his his CDs there. We want you to get them. Uh, fantastic stuff right here. I'm telling you, I've listened to every one of them, and I'm I'm going to listen to them again. Uh, well, by the time this airs, I'd, I'll have already listened to them again, because uh, I, I think it's good to listen to them every year at Christmas time Amen. because there's so much tradition that we get in our head, and you you kind of refocus some things and you help us get come back and look at this in the biblical way again. That was my that was my goal. Well, I've got, uh, let, let's, let's get right back where we left off last time uh, in the last program. And uh, I, want, I want to talk about the shepherds. Mm -hmm. and, and then we're going to talk about the tower, mm -hmm. um, the tower of, um, what'd you call of the it? the flock. The tower of the flock. Uh, we're going to talk about the inn. There's mm -hmm. no room in the inn. That'd be the place to start. Where do you want to start? The I end? Think, yes. All right. So we got, the Bible says there was no room for them in the end. So we got Joseph and Mary. They're yep. there to pay to, to pay their they're taxes. They're there to pay the tax. And She's extremely with child, yes. getting ready to have a baby, ready and there's baby. no place to. No. So start well, right there. They get there. there, and because they're in the family and lineage of David, so there are thousands of people because you you have uh, you have seven days to pay the tax. And so all of David's extended family are there. And so when they get to that part of the of Bethlehem where Boaz's threshing floor and all their property was, man, there are thousands of people. There's no place where she needs to have a baby. 
And the inn is the storage inn at the end of Boaz's threshing floor. Everybody thinks there was a, a wicked old innkeeper that wouldn't give them a place to stay. I, I beg to differ, you're not going to find an innkeeper in your Bible. So, so say that again because this is big. Yeah, there were no We've innkeepers all in the Bible. We've been taught that this it's is nothing a, like but, a hotel. Nothing but tradition. Absolute tradition. So you're saying the inn yeah. is part of what? The inn is in the inn is a, the storage inn at Boaz's threshing floor. I've been there, done excavation work there. Uh, the storage inn, you could probably sleep a dozen people inside it. Uh, it's kind of like a cave hollowed out into the hillside at the end of Boaz's threshing floor, and. Uh, uh, that's where the book of Ruth, chapter 2, is right. all about. So, so this is where them got the, the, the harvesters. Yes. This is where they would sleep for the this night. This is where they, while so they were they could working protect in the things yes. from the thieves. They store their, store their grain in there. They could sleep there. So um, when they got there, there was no place for them. Because the Bible says in the inn, not a inn or an an inn, but the inn. So when someone says, I'll meet you at the inn. You, know, you would know exactly. Our, is what? that Motel Six? Is that the is yeah. that the Comfort Inn? We, no, the they, Inn meant something specific. That meant right? something, and they, that's where it was, because uh, the Bible had already said in Micah chapter four and verse number eight uh, that under the old tower of the flock shall he come even the first dominion. And what people don't realize is that uh, if you stood at the gates of Bethlehem and uh, you went uh, southwest about seventy or eighty paces, you would be at Boaz's threshing floor. And just up the hill from that, about another 80 or so paces, was the Tower of the Flock. Now, you can go back to the book of Genesis. It was called the, pow the Tower of Adar. But after David took Jerusalem, it was renamed whenever he set aside the 24 courses for the uh, service at the temple or the tabernacle that he built, and later Solomon building the temple. And so uh, he renamed it from the Tower of Adar to the tower of the flock because it's going to be the place where sacrificial lambs are going to be okay, born. So let's let's get right back where we were then. Mary is extremely heavy with child, yeah. as they say. Ready to have birth. He is there. He had to come. To, they got to pay their he taxes. He had no choice. The Romans, so, the Romans taxed an unborn child as living. Yeah. They had a whole lot more sense than we seem to yeah, have. We, yeah, yeah. We, we think, yeah, we just kill them. Yeah. And so... So he wants to, he, he knows she's got to have the baby. Mm -hmm. There's no, they say there's no room in the inn. You know, we're, we're everybody's right. sleeping. They can't go in there. Well, so she what happens some next? privacy. Right. So, so what happens had, next? All they had to do was just go up the hill to the Tower of the Flock. And the Tower of the Flock is where all of the sacrificial lambs were born. And so the shepherds that are out on the hillside keeping watch over their flocks, these are a part of uh, of the priesthood. They're called sanctified shepherds. And uh, David set it up when he set up the 24 courses with the grandsons of, uh, uh, of Aaron. And so uh, uh, these sanctified shepherds are keeping watch over their flocks. And so when a ewe lamb is ready to give birth, they bring them into the tower of the flock. And there those baby lambs are caught so what you're saying is these were not just somebody's farm over there, and these no. weren't just some private shepherds. These are paschal these... lambs. These are this are the flocks. If we had time, we could talk about the story Jesus used of the narrow gate and the wide gate. All of this had to do with the paschal lambs at the end of the lambing season and what goes through there. And so uh, these these shepherds were watching over the flocks from which the sacrificial lambs. For sacrifice, and so whenever they had one that was ready to give birth to its, they, to its, they didn't have them born out in the field. They would take them up they there. They took them up there because see, they had to be without spot and blemish. And so when a baby lamb is born, they're caught. Sanctified shepherds or priestly shepherds. Uh, there was a chief shepherd. His name at the time was Malker, and uh, in charge of this particular uh, process. And so that was carried then into an inner chamber and placed in a double bowl manger, and there that lamb was inspected for spot and blemish. And then it was wrapped, uh, every limb was wrapped, and its body up to its face, set aside for so many days, and re-inspected. And I bet that's called swaddling clothes. It's called swaddling cloths. Yeah. Yes. They, the swaddling cloths were worn out priestly garments that had been properly sanitized and prepared 
for that very purpose. So you're saying that Jesus is going to be born in the same place he was born that these in, little lambs were born. He was born in the same place where for almost a thousand years the sacrificial lambs that represented him had been born. No coincidence. No coincidence. It? God had it planned. Yes. Now what about... That's why the angel's message to the shepherds... Now I got a question here. Okay. Was Joseph expecting this and Mary? I'm not so sure they were expecting it quite like that. No, I don't think they were. Um, I, I, she knew she was about any time. And she knew she's yeah. carrying the Messiah. There's she, no doubt about that. She knew that for sure, and Joseph knew it. And they also, I'm sure, knew the Bible that it was written yes. that he would be born in Bethlehem of yeah. Judea. And so here they, they so are. So there they are. Three days' journey from Nazareth. Here they are. But I'm not sure... Is there, is there a scripture in the Old Testament that specifies this, this tower of the... Yeah, Matthew, the, uh, Micah chapter 4, verse 8, very plainly, his first dominion would be at the tower of the flock. So you feel like there is a prophecy that yes. said that he would be born He would be in born right very, there, yes. Now, whether Joseph and Mary... Whether Joseph and Mary fully understood Well, they not, were headed to that because yeah. like you, if the inn is what you said, the was, inn is that right was part there. of that. It's all right there within a hundred yards of each other. They maybe other. not real, didn't realize they were going to be born out in the gra out in the straw, right. but they they you know the the tradition tells us he was in the back out somewhere in the in the stable, stable areas yep. and uh, behind an inn somewhere. You don't find any of that in your Bible. What you do find in the Bible is the prophecy that he was born at the tower of the flock, and what we do know is that it was at the tower of the flock where the sacrificial lambs were birthed. And Jesus was the sacrifice. He was the Passover lamb. And he's born in the very exact place yes. that those lambs would be born yes. for, for years, for a thousand That's years. That's why the, why the angel said, you'll find this babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in the manger. Okay. Well, let's they know exactly where to go All because right. well, it's that's, a part of their ministry. All right. Well, that's where we're going to go next. Hang on just a second. Folks, you're watching Crossing the Spotlight. Um, Brother Hiltabittle is talking about his, his CD set here, Truths of Christmas. I want you to make sure you get that thing. Uh, I'm telling you, this, what we're talking about right now is on this. And there's, I think, almost three hours worth almost of, three uh, hours. of you talking on here. And you talk about this and so much more. Money. And uh, so, folks, I want you to, to know that we're, we're, we're breezing through some of this, but there's a lot more on these discs for you. So let's go to the next step. So Joseph and Mary get there. They, they, they sign up for the taxes. Mm -hmm. They're looking to, she's got to have that baby. Yes. He's, he's looking, probably planned to go there in the first place, but he planned to sleep in that yep. inn part. Yep. There was no, there was no room. So, yep. so they're out there where the lambs are. Yep. And they get some privacy, I guess. And They uh, go into the tower of the flock. It would be no problem. I, I can't show you the pictures because we have an agreement with Israel not to reveal some of these locations from our archaeological work. Uh, but I can tell you it, it was would a very large up, area. It would mess up some of the historical sites that well, people pay to go <laughs> see over there. Let's just be honest. Yeah, they right? don't. Most people don't realize that the Bethlehem we're talking about is not the Bethlehem yeah. of today. And well, I, I think a lot of the places we visit over there are not, They're not. what we think no. they are. So, no. Especially but that's Bethlehem. Right. But anyway... Um, so let's go. They go in and the baby's born and they, he's put in the same manger where all of the ins lambs are inspected. And, and by the way, I've seen it. It's a double bowl manger. And the reason why it has two bowls because on the Day of Atonement you had to send two up. One would be the sacrifice, the other the scapegoat. Right. And uh, this is where Jesus was born. Just like the Bible said he would be in the Tower of the Flock. So where is Satan at this time? Oh, I'm sure he's doing everything he could to keep him from happening. Yeah. Yes. There was uh, no room in the end, and, yeah. but that's where God wanted him. Up. I the have a feeling that Satan does not know who the Messiah is. That, that, it's my personal belief. It's probably. I don't think he knows. Probably until well, they, the uh, baptism of John. But he just, would have known them because as soon as the baptism was goes over, goes up on the mountain. He yep. took him into the wilderness, and, the, and you yep, know the, the story temptation there. there yeah, yep. the temptation. Yep. Um, I can't prove that, but I think that's yep. when Satan. It was revealed to, yep. and Satan now knew who he was. Right. But up to that point, only a handful of people: Joseph and Mary, Elizabeth. Yeah, you know. So and then eight days later, eight Simeon, days later, and Simeon, Anna. And Anna. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, honestly, uh, it's about 18, 18 months or 21 months later when the wise men show up and they still, 
they still don't know. They have to go back and search the scripture. Now, we'll to find get to out them in a said. minute. I don't remember if we talked about them we last week. We talked a week. little bit about them last all right. week. So let's, all right, so the birth happens. Now let's go back in, out in the field where yeah. those shepherds are. Mm -hmm. Take, explain what's happening there. Some angels show up. The angels show up. Uh, now the, the baby's already been born, we baby's think, born. at that time. And the, and the angels show up and say, this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. The next verse, I believe it's verse 15 you remember, or 16. Uh, is that Luke, Luke 2? Luke 2, 15 or 16. While you're talking, I'm going and, to find uh, that. As soon, soon as they said that, the Bible says, and immediately they go with haste and found. They didn't run all over. You know, the tradition says, oh, they went all over the place, knocking on the innkeeper's door. Do you have a baby born out back? No. The Bible says they came with haste and found. And why? Because they knew exactly where to find swaddling cloths and a manger. Well, let me read a little bit of this. Yes. By the way, I, I don't mean to be funny, but th this is the Charlie Brown Christmas story that we grew up with as right. kids. I know. It's the great one of the greatest Christmas yeah. shows in the world. I mean, Charlie Brown. The whole story is about him trying to figure out what Christmas is all about. Amen. Nobody knows except the, the little kid with the blanket that everyone <laughs> made fun of. He puts the blanket down in that in that scene. The only time ever in the Charlie Brown story that Linus puts the blanket down, and he says, "That's easy, Charlie Brown. I know what Christmas is about." Powerful, powerful mm -hmm. little story, and he reads from the King James yes. Bible. Yes. And he reads this right here. He says, uh, uh, I'm not sure how much of it he reads, but he says, uh, uh, let's see. The angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Let me start in verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. This is the shepherds. Uh, in verse 8, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. Now, your, mm -hmm. your belief is that these were shepherds contracted to yeah. produce lambs for, well, the, for the they, Passover. They were sanctified shepherds, um, priestly. And they were, uh, they were abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. It's nighttime mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. The Lord's been born, right. we believe, already mm -hmm. at this, uh, maybe sure. just moments yep. ago. And then verse 9, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Amen. And they were sore afraid. Who wouldn't be, Who right? Who wouldn't be? <laughs> and the angel said unto them, and he reads this on the Charlie Brown Christmas mm -hmm. story that way back in the 70s. And he says, uh, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Yes. For unto you is born this day yeah. in the city of David. That's, that's mm -hmm. Bethlehem. In the city of David, now he hasn't told him where, has nope. he? Nope. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, now they would understand who that is, the oh, Messiah yeah. they've been waiting on. That's, they were priestly people. Yes. And then here's the sign that you were talking mm -hmm. about in verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. He's going to tell mm -hmm. them how to find him. He says, you go over the hill, turn left at the no, oak tree, no. and go, go 100 yards and go into the barn on the right with the, with the red door. None of that. But yet they, but yet they knew. And I learned yeah. this from you last year. I, I never saw this before. How did, these, how did they know where he was? Yeah. Let's read it. Sign. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Yes. And it goes on with the, the... Read the next. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And then verse 15. 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds, after they get up off the ground, yeah. <laughs> said one to another, Let us now go even unto... Un Bethlehem unto, unto Bethlehem and into. see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us and they made haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. So explain that to explain how they knew exactly right to the spot. Because they knew they are priestly shepherds. They were looking for the Messiah. They knew the lambs that they were wrapping in swaddling cloths when they're born are sacrifices. They understand this. They know exactly where to find swaddling cloths in a manger. It's a part of their work. It's where they, went with their, where they went with their, where they went with their, they're used to give birth. Yeah. 
And the Bible said, unto, not into. They could walk in the dark and find it, yes. which, which they did. Well, they did. They just walked up the hillside because the hills of Vermont is all around this. And there was the babe. It said they came with haste and found. They didn't run all over every place trying to figure it out. They knew exactly where to go. Can you imagine being one of them shepherds? Oh, yes. Walking in that place, <laughs> knowing what you're about to see. Yes. The Lord, the Messiah is Absolutely. here. He's been born. Yes. He's, he's, he's <laughs> been born maybe minutes ago, maybe an hour ago. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feast my eyes upon I'm going to look at him. Amazing. Amazing story. But yeah. all of it fulfilled Scripture to a T. Yeah. God has said, this is where he'll be born, and that's exactly where he was born. And fulfilling Hebrews 10.5, And a lot of people say, well, it's a December time. Wait a minute. They're not in the field giving birth to lambs in the, in the fall or in the winter. The lambs are always born in the springtime. In the spring. And so this is springtime. And by the way, that's according to the Roman archives when Quirinius was governor, uh, uh, that's when the district where Bethlehem was, uh, the last week of March, the first week of April, which would have been the first of Nisan, uh, was the week that they were to pay their tax. John Jesus the was born. Jesus was born in the same season that he died, yeah. the month of Nisan. Now, can, John the Baptist is born six months earlier. Yes. And, uh, and the, the virgin birth, the conception... Yes. would have been nine months before yes. this, maybe Nissan one, right. if we're right about that, somewhere. Yeah. You go back nine months, you'll yes. find where the Holy Ghost came upon Mary. There's a lot of interesting things you can look at. There are a lot, of, a lot of things about it. And, and of course, we're not going to part company with people who don't agree with us on the day. But I've done a extensive research in this area, have five different resources painting you back to the springtime, the birthing time of lambs. And... This is where they were, Jesus was born. Well, Doc, it's Christmas. we got one oh, minute left. Man. Tell the viewers what they need to do with this Christmas baby. Christmas is all about redemption. That's what it's all about. From one end to the other, our Bible is about redemption. There was a body prepared for him according to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 5. That body was prepared for one purpose. The whole purpose for the birth of Christ is a virgin born baby was to be sinless without the sin nature of humanity so that God in his full deity could inhabit an earthly body and go to Calvary's cross and there without sin take it on himself the sin of the world to pay the price of sin so that then you and I can have the freedom and opportunity to receive Christ as our Savior. Amen. That's what Christmas is really and all as, about. And as, just like Linus said on the Charlie yes. Brown I know what Christmas is all about. Yes. That the Christ child was born to save us from our sins. That's it. Well, folks, there it is. That's it. Merry Christmas to you all. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes on them skies.